Kamala Harris's backing to replace Joe Biden supports tech stocks, while a flight to safety sees the Aussie and Kiwi dollars both fall half a percent. European stocks rise on hopes there'll be less trade friction under a Harris presidency, and the People's Bank of China surprises with an interest rate cut. That's coming up in our Five Things in Five Minutes. And then, in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ's Chief Economist for Greater China, Ren Yun, extracts the meaning and a key phrase to come out of last week's third plenum communique and what it means for China's economy. Now, after a decade, it is now a point to strengthen and to enhance the functioning of this different type of market mechanism. But first, in Five and Five with ANZ, markets are digesting the news of US President Joe Biden pulling out of November's election race and endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris to go up against former President Donald Trump. At 4 a.m. Sydney, Melbourne time, U.S. stocks had rebounded. The S&P 500 was up 1%. U.S. Treasury yields are up about three basis points, with expectations for higher deficits, regardless of the result. Here's ANZ senior international economist Tom Kenny on what Harris would need to do to win the election. Harris's ceiling is likely to be higher than both Biden's and Trump's, as her disapproval rating is lower than theirs. In the coming months... We think that Harris needs to generate a profile and instill voter enthusiasm as voter turnout will be key to the election. Harris also gives Democrats a better chance of retaking the House from the Republicans and keeping the Senate, especially if she can generate voter turnout. The policy agenda under Harris is likely to be very similar to that of Biden, and thus comparing Harris's policy playbook with Trump policies, we think on balance that Trumps are likely to be more negative for inflation, in particular inflationary. This is largely coming through his increase in tariffs and the cut down in immigration. The US dollar index was little changed, down 0.06% at 4am Sydney Melbourne time, as the euro and the yen rose slightly. The Aussie dollar was trading down 0.58% at 66.43 US cents. And the Kiwi was down half a percent at 59.78. Again, that flight to safety. Number two, US tech stocks rose, with Harris's policy position considered more favourable to big tech than Trump. The Nasdaq was up 1.4%, and European markets lifted, with the Euro stocks 50 up nearly 1.5% overnight. Here's ANZ head of G3 Economics, Brian Martin. I think that probably reflects some hope that were Vice President Kamala Harris to be endorsed as the Democrat nominee and win the presidential election, that that would lead to a less fictitious trade relationship with the US in the future. The euro area economy comprising most of the EU is a very open economy and trades very strongly with the US in both terms of exports and imports. Number three. So more on that move in the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Both were down over half a percent overnight because of the initial uncertainty of those shifts in US politics. ANZ New Zealand Chief Economist Sharon Zollner says there's still a question mark over how large the safe haven flows will be. The upshot seems to be everyone will wait and see with the must-reads being the latest polling results, for example, but also whether it's looking like Kamala Harris is going to have any challenges or not. The Democrats need to make up their minds by mid-August. That seems a long way away, so probably the fireworks will continue. Number four. The People's Bank of China surprised everyone yesterday by cutting its seven-day reverse repo rate by 10 basis points to 1.7%. That was a move just a few days after the big once-in-a-decade third plenum and weaker-than-expected GDP figures. Previously, it had been worried lower rates would hurt bank profit margins too much. Here's ANZ senior China strategist Zhao Pangxing on why it was such a surprise. Just last week, the PBOC warned that the interest rate can't be too low. So the interest rate cut today is not in line with the PBOC's policy stance a week ago. Recently, the PBOC take measures to increase the bank profit margin, including deposit rate cut by major banks. And also the PBOC uh, prohibited uh, financial institutions to reward their clients with additional interest. Uh, I think these both measures have uh, contributed to the bank profit uh, a bit so that the pressure on profit margin is not as significant as before. Number five. Singapore's annual inflation rate is expected to fall to 2.7% in June from 3.1% in May. Those figures are out later today. 
ANZ's Head of Asia Research, Kuhn Go, says there was one big one-off in the figures that will mean the Monetary Authority of Singapore is in no hurry to ease policy. We shouldn't celebrate too much because part of that decline is temporary due to a lower certificate of entitlement prices for cars uh, because the Land Transport Authority increased uh, the quota for the quarter. This is expected to be temporary, but the core inflation numbers is still expected to be somewhat sticky. We're forecasting 3% year-on-year growth, down slightly only from 3.1% the previous month. And underlying this is just ongoing stickiness in inflation in Singapore because of still strong wage growth, which is keeping services-related prices high. Couldn't go there. Now, in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ's chief economist for Greater China, Raymond Jung, talks about a particular phrase that came out of last week's once-in-a-decade meeting of China's leadership, the third plenum. There was a change in one particular phrase to go from to give a better play of government function 11 years ago to give a better play of market mechanism. Could you talk a bit about that and why that's important? We can see this third plenum, 2024, compared with the 2013 one, as an extension of what has been doing in the last decades, you know, since uh, President Xi Jinping took over. Now, at the beginning, of course, that he laid out this term called deepening reform comprehensively. And there has been lots of changes, you know, within the government departments, within the reorganization and overhaul of different type of regulatory functions, the central banks and the Ministry of Finance. So there has been a lot of changes in terms of uh, reorganizing uh, the government functions so that China can continue to support what they call a socialist market economy. Now, after a decade, it is now a point to strengthen and to enhance the functioning of this different type of market mechanism. So they emphasize on governance, on market economy, which means that if you look at the whole economics, you know, in Chinese terms, there has been a lot of repeated or mentioning repeatedly. I can remember at least, you know, 20 or 30 times about institutional uh, arrangement and mechanism in different areas in the economies, which means that now they really want to improve the relationship between the government and the markets. So that on one hand, they want the markets to be the dominant mechanism for resource allocations, as they have stated 10 years ago. But at the same time, they also want to um, improve the government control or uh, management capability so that the some of the uh, markets phenomenon uh, will not be beyond the policy mandate or the policy objectives. That's why they, uh, what we expect or how we interpret this statement is that they would be pushing a lot of government or ministerial uh, reorganization and or the uh, division of tasks uh, between different departments, including the central banks, the Ministry of Finance, even the uh, financial regulators. They would really want to have another round of reorganization that will be happening over the next few years. Raymond Yun. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Tuesday, July the 23rd. Catch you tomorrow with the detail from today's CPI figures from Singapore. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.